All right, let's uh, take a moment to pray together, and uh, then we'll get into our class today. Thank you, each one, for connecting to the class. All right, who wants to pray? Um, does uh, Leah Lama, would you like to pray? Okay, right. <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead. Okay, Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thank you for being with me in this class. And thank you for giving us this moment. Please be, <clears throat> please be with us, Lord. And we're starting with our uh, class, Lord Jesus. Please be with, with each one of us and with us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds so we can understand all the teachings. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything I put into it. The name of Peter, right? Amen. 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 Thank you. Right. Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. We are in this class where we have been uh, talking and learning about faith in God. And so um, uh, we are developing this little by little. You know, the Bible tells us to do it line by line, precept upon precept. So Little by little, we are developing our understanding on this uh, subject of, on the topic or subject of faith. And, um, and this is so important uh, because we have to be uh, called to live by faith. And uh, we are going to serve God by faith. We are going to, we are going to do great exploits through faith. And it's through our believing in God, our faith in God. Uh, that's how we're going to live. That's how we're going to serve God. And that's how we're going to do great things uh, for the kingdom of God. So uh, we want to learn you know, how to live by faith, how to walk by faith. And um, uh, I just want to remind us that this is a, a learning process, meaning you know, we're going to learn. Little by little, we're going to learn how to uh, make this journey of faith. Right, so um, don't worry and don't get uh, anxious that you know. Okay, I don't know every. Uh, I may not, you know, learn everything or be able to put everything together in the beginning. No, as we journey together, we're going to learn more and more uh, about faith and how we're going to learn, walk by faith. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I think uh, most people have uh, connected to the class, so. Um, I could go ahead and do this. So we're still in chapter four, where we've been talking about Jesus' teaching on faith. And we'll, uh, uh, we intensely spent a lot of time on this because we want to learn from Jesus what he had to say about faith. So we, I'll just quickly review. Jesus taught us that all things are possible through faith in God. So that's how we approach uh, life, how approach things in life. Uh, Jesus taught us that we will receive according to our faith. Nothing can stop us. Uh, so we operate out of that perspective. Number three, we said that our will and desire is involved in the exercise of faith. So as we are uh, seeking to exercise faith in God, we must also understand that our will, our desire is involved. God wants that uh, determined desire behind the faith that we exercise. Number four, we said that uh, faith is key to seeing God's glory manifested, that when we have faith, when we believe God, it causes God to demonstrate his glory, to reveal his glory, to display his glory. And so that's how we're going to see more and more of the glory of God. Number five, he said, when things go from bad to worse, he's called us to only believe, just to stay in a place of faith. Uh, don't quit just because things may seem to be worsening. The situations, the situation may be, become even more difficult. Don't quit, just stay in faith. And um, then last week, we spent a lot of time on these three things. I didn't expect uh, two full hours to go on it, but 
uh, you know, uh, nonetheless, I think it's important. Uh, it's good that we spend that time. Uh, faith is released through words spoken out of a believing heart. So this is J Jesus taught us. You have faith in your heart, but you release it through what you say, through your words. He taught us to speak of our faith. Secondly, he also said, he taught us that faith is exercised when we pray, in prayer. But he taught us how to pray. That when we pray, we believe that we receive them. We believe that we receive them. So, you know, uh, uh, there is this believing aspect and uh, what how do we believe believe that you have received it it's done in the spirit realm it's done the matter is settled you believe that when you pray right he taught us to do that and uh, number eight jesus also taught that we must act on our faith so you believe god then you begin to act on it do something that demonstrates that expresses your faith uh, that shows what you believe right so we see that, and that's the way he engaged with many people. He saw their faith, but he said, you know, for, for instance, this paralytic, he saw their faith, but he told him, Ryan, take up your bed and do something. Go, you know. And so uh, we, we see uh, numerous examples of that. So we're going to go forward from there. We, so we stopped over there last class. Uh, we're going to pick up with point number nine. Okay. Um, so. Everyone is fine with everyone is with me so far, okay. Yes. All right, we ready. Okay, we are ready to go forward. That was just a quick review of things. All right now, I want to encourage you that um, you know, as you are learning about these things, um, begin to put them into practice in your life. Right. So take these things that we're learning, and we're going to keep learning more as we journey. Begin to apply them to situations in your life. Each one of us, you know, will have different things that we are dealing with. Uh, we are, you know, where we need to exercise faith in God for. And I want you to take these lessons, these truths that we are uncovering from the word and begin to use them. You apply these things because uh, it's the word of God. This is what Jesus has taught us. And this is what we find in the word. So you begin to apply these things to your life situations. You, you know, you, you begin to say, Lord, I want to see things change in this area of my life or in this situation in my life. And you begin to extend faith in God for those things. All right. So uh, don't just uh, uh, listen to these lessons as, you know, part of the course. Of course, you have to. It's part of the course. But more importantly, it's something you want to make part of your life. Right? So begin to practice them. Begin to put them into use uh, in various things, in various ways. Okay? Um, and, and that's how we grow in faith. You know, I, I, just a little story here. I remember way back when I was in college um, and I was uh, doing my engineering in, uh, in a town called Manipal. Uh, so that in those days, so this was back in, I did my engineering between 1986 to 1990. So that was a long time ago, my bachelor's. Um, uh, and while I was studying there in the engineering college, uh, in my third year in the college, uh, we started um, uh, a weekly, uh, you could call it a Bible study. We, we used to call it a Believers Fellowship. It was called Believers Fellowship. Um, so uh, it, it was every every Saturday evening. And we, uh, we rented a seminar hall in an, a hotel in Manipal. Manipal was a student town. Of course, now it's grown and it's become big. But in those days, there were only two hotels in the entire town. And uh, so in one of the hotels, he rented a seminar hall where we used to run these weekly meetings every Saturday evening. Now, I remember I was, I was a student. We were all students. But, you know, I, I had learned about faith, that you can believe God. Now, uh, you know, we, we didn't have the money to pay for the hall. 
he didn't have. Like I was a student. So I just had enough money to, you know, what my parents would send me every month to take care of my food and living. I didn't have like extra money to do this. But I said, God, you said, if we have faith, nothing is impossible. And I'm taking the step of faith and I'm believing that at the every month, you know, so we'll have meetings for four four Saturdays or some months you'll have meetings for five Saturdays that in the end of the month when they give me the bill to pay I believe that you will provide the money I need now I, I, I don't remember the amount you know we had the arrangement with the hotel that when we rent the seminar hall for two hours or three hours every Saturday evening you know the, this is the cost I, I forget it forget the amount but whatever it was, you know, uh, we didn't have the money. I didn't have the money. I just believed God. And I said, God, I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to force people to give. Uh, we're just going to keep a little tin box at the back of the hall and tell people, you know, if you want to give, you're welcome to give. And remember, these are all students. So it's not like these are working people or people have a lot of money. It's just we're all students, but we believed God. And... Uh, so I would just pray. And then I would use this. You know, I, I remember in the early days, once we were, you know, when we were just starting these meetings, one month, uh, this was the last Saturday of the month. That means this is the last chance that uh, you know, people are going to put some offering in the tin box or the back. And I needed at those, that time about 360 rupees. I needed that amount. You know, it, today it looks very small. Uh, you know, 360 rupees is a very, very small amount. It's like uh, uh, about uh, four or five, about five US dollars approximately. But, uh, you know, that's the money I needed. And uh, I didn't have that money. I was just a student. And I said, God, I'm speaking over that need and declaring that at the end of the meeting, I will receive that money because after this meeting, I have to pay the bill. You know, we've rented the hall for this month. I have to pay the bill. The hotel will give me the bill. I have to pay. And I didn't have the money. But I, was, I used the same principles, right? The same principles you and I are learning. Jesus said, if you have faith, you will speak, right? If you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. You know, it was a very small amount. Uh, we were just renting a hall and, you know, we used to have time of worship, teach the word of God, pray, minister to people. And I never forced people to give money. I would just say, hey, there's a box at the back. You know, it costs money for the hall. If you want to give, you give. This was the last Saturday. So I pray, use the same principles. In the name of Jesus, I declare a release of finances so that this bill will be paid in full. I will owe no man anything. And God is our provider. Just speak the words, believe God. And then, you know, we had the meeting. I never begged, never said. In fact, you know, we, we didn't even take up an offering. We just left the box at the back because we were all students. We don't want to pressure anybody to give. But that Saturday, a person walked in and, uh, he was not a student, so he was like a, a working person, professional. So he walked in. I, mean, I don't I don't even know how he came, whatever. And I don't even know whether he put the money, who put the money. But at the end of the service, after we finished, when we were packing up, we went to the box, and the money that we needed was in the box. And, uh, you know, I, I, for me, it was like, God, this is, it was so amazing. You know, now uh, that amount, like $5 is, is not a big amount today. But way back in those early days, that's how, uh, you know, I, I learned to walk by faith. I learned to use your faith in God. So what I want to, the reason I'm sharing that is, you know, we start off with small things. That God, I believe you will provide the money for this. I'm, I'm, I'm serving you. I'm going to do something small. I mean, it, 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 for, for me, it was big. But, you know, when other people look at it, it may look very small. 
But yet, that's how we learn. You know, step by step, we learn to believe God. And we see God's faithful. And that's how we grow in our faith. You know, step by step, we do small things. And we see God faithful then your faith in God becomes, you know, you, you grow, You then you can do bigger things and bigger things and bigger things, right? So the reason I'm sharing that is I want to encourage each one of us, right? Wherever you are, you know, some of you may be young, some of you may be older, uh, wherever you are in your journey, uh, use your faith. Start off with, you know, where you are in life and uh, begin to use your faith. And then you will see, hey, this is God's word, and it is working. It is it is happening the way Jesus said. Uh, I have to speak my faith. I have to pray and believe, and uh, I act in line, and I will see the results. You know, and all of us, each one of us, can do that, right? So begin to use these things in your life, uh, just right where you are. Okay, let me get back to the um, the the lesson. All right, so. What Jesus taught, uh, point number nine, is that there are levels of faith, right? You can see in um, in, in the way Jesus interacted, and I, I just kind of summarized it here. Uh, there are times when he turned around to his disciples and he said, why are you so fearful? Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You know, so... Well, Jesus was telling, you know, this was the time when they were in the middle of the storm. Jesus telling them, you have no faith. No faith. And that means, uh, you know, you're, you're not even believing God, not even little faith. No, It's saying you have no faith. And notice uh, the connection here. They are so fearful, no faith. That means when we let fear, fear fill our, fill our minds and hearts, gets rid of faith, right? So we need to guard against fear. You know, fear about failure, fear about something not working out, fear about things going bad. So guard your heart and mind against fear because fear negates faith. Okay? Then there are other instances when Jesus referred to people and he said, oh, you have little faith, little faith. That means... They had small, little faith, you know. So, yeah, and I've given these references here. You know, uh, when there was worry, Matthew six six thirty, people were worried. He said, "Your little faith." Uh, when people didn't believe that, you know, he could multiply food, he said, "Your little faith." Right. Or uh, so. Uh, that's another measure. You see that, but then there are times when Jesus said. Great faith. He looked at people and said, you have great faith. Great faith. So uh, the reason I point out is that uh, the Lord is recognizing, you know, that these different measures or levels of faith in the hearts of people. Okay. But remember, faith is powerful. Faith can move mountains. See? Uh, but we need to let our faith grow. And, and um, like I just shared, uh, take steps of faith, you know, uh, uh, go from, you know, we may be in a place of no faith. Well, get your faith up, meditate in the word, receive the word of God and come to that place, even of little faith. And then you come to this place of great faith in God, right? So we can grow in our faith by feeding ourselves with a word and by releasing our faith the way Jesus taught us. So we can move from no faith to great faith. Okay. So we can move, we can make that transition by the word of God, and we will learn how to develop great faith or strong faith in God. The other thing we see in the teachings of Jesus is that worry, fear, and doubt negate faith. Right? Worry is being anxious. You know, we, we would use the word anxious or being worried about something. You're being overly concerned about something to the point where it affects your mind, it affects your thinking. That's worry. And worry negates faith. And you see that in Matthew 6, verses 30 and 31. You know, he said, uh, this, uh, you know, they were worried. He was talking about worry. And in the context of worry, he said, oh, you of little faith. Right? So you can see that worry is keeping people in that place of just little faith. 
There were fear is the other thing, you know, which we just mentioned. Uh, people being fearful, uh, letting. So uh, fear is like faith in the wrong things. Right? You're believing that something bad is going to happen or uh, some calamity is going to happen. Fear is faith, or believing in the wrong things. It's misplaced faith. Right? So fear negates faith. Now the enemy will try to cause us to worry, become anxious. He will try to cause us to be fearful with putting all these wrong imaginations, wrong thoughts. And then, of course, there is doubt. Doubt is questioning God, or questioning his word. You know, in, in, in this case, when Peter was walking um, on the water, Jesus had given him his word. Jesus had said, come. But when he started, you know, he, he became fearful. He started sinking. Jesus said, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? What was he doubting? He was doubting the word. Jesus had said, come. And now he was doubting that word. Right? So doubt negates faith. So we need to guard against these three things, worry, fear, and doubt. Don't doubt, don't question God or his word, just trust him, trust his word. Don't let fear, uh, misplaced faith, uh, come in. Don't let anxiety, uh, overly concern, you know. Uh, let, remember that ultimately God is going to work. And so it's not my power, it's not my abilities. So let's leave that that part with God. Let God figure things out. Let God work out, work things out. He's only called us to have faith in him, right? So let's be in that place of faith. Keep these three things out of our lives, okay? So uh, to quickly review 10 things that we learned uh, from Jesus, what he taught about faith. He taught all things are possible. Uh, he said, we will receive according to our faith. Our will and desire is involved in the exercise of faith. Faith is key to seeing God's glory manifested. Uh, when things go, when turn bad, just keep believing. Our faith is released to the words we speak. Faith is exercised when we believe that we have received, when we pray. We act in line with our faith. There are different levels of faith so that we can transition from no faith to great faith. And we keep worry, fear, and doubt out because these things negate faith. Okay? So, any questions on uh, this chapter before we get into the next chapter? Everyone's with me so far? Yes, Pastor. Okay, great. Thank you. So now we're going to go into chapter 5, which is uh, the Old Testament on faith. Okay? That means, what do we see in the Old Testament? So faith in the Old Testament. So we're going to start off, we're just going to kind of run through. So, of course, uh, people in the Old Testament also walked by faith in God. Right. So we, uh, while we may not find too many instances of the word believe or believe of faith in the Old Testament. Um, we know that even the Old Testament saints, believers, people walked by faith because, you know, that Hebrews chapter 11, which is that great uh, chapter on faith, is mentioning all these Old Testament heroes and saying, look, they all walked by faith, by faith. So although we don't find the word of faith and believe too many times in the Old Testament, yet all these people, they all walked by faith. And um, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, gives us this simple and yet powerful statement that expresses the heart of God, which is, the just shall live by his faith. And it's quoted often in the New Testament. Right? And this statement, which actually comes from the Old Testament, was the basis of the Protestant Reformation that, that sparked Martin Luther, you know, to do what he did and to bring about the, the, the great Reformation. And now, the just, the person who is blameless before God, who's righteous before God, what about him? 
He is a person who is living by his faith in God. And that's a very important theme in the scripture that it is through faith that we are justified before God or we are uh, righteous before God. And such a person lives by his faith in God. You know, so this whole principle of living by faith, that means whatever you do on earth, whatever you do on earth, whatever you do in life, you do it out of faith in God, right? And Hebrews chapter 11 is an amazing chapter. I know it's a rather lengthy chapter. It's got 40 verses there. But, you know, let's just take some time to uh, go through Hebrews chapter 11, right? So what we'd like to do is... Uh, uh, I just like each one of us, I will stop sharing. And uh, I would just uh, like uh, each one of us to, um, you know, take read two verses each in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. Now, before we do that, I just see in the chat that uh, Divya has a question. So please ask your question, Divya. Yeah, Pastor, thank you so much. Uh, this is regarding, uh, I was thinking about Peter, uh, about his faith, because he had all these fear, doubt, and he was anxious, and all these. Uh, but later on, um, his faith was strong. So uh, these disciples, uh, they were walking with Jesus all along. And uh, I would love to know, like, what uh, would be some contributing factors to a person's faith. They had the experience mm. of hearing and seeing and um, from Jesus, uh, all the wonders that he did, yet, you know, they were having these fears and doubts. So uh, what helps me have faith? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now, you know, in the, if, you, if we try to put ourselves in the place of the disciples, um, you know, and I'm, I'm just using my imagination here. Okay, so what I'm saying is not a chapter and verse, but it's more of a imagination. Let's imagine ourselves being one of those 12 disciples, you know, like Peter, or James, or John, whoever. But imagine, you know, okay, so here comes Jesus and say, come follow me. And there's something inside us that says, yeah, we have to follow this man, right? They don't know everything about Jesus. Uh, and, and, and I'm just speaking from a purely natural standpoint, right? So imagine if we were one of them, uh, how, how would things have developed in our lives? You know, we don't know everything about this person Jesus but something in our hearts that said you know follow him so we start you know spend going with him uh, uh, some followed you know uh, um, uh, when you go to John chapter 1 you find out that it was actually John the Baptist who pointed to Jesus and said he's the Lamb of God and so you know Andrew started following him uh, and from Andrew when Andrew goes and finds Peter and then uh, uh, J James and John start following him, uh, and then uh, 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 Nathaniel comes along. Yeah, it's like, so basically, it starts off because John the Baptist points to Jesus and says, "Follow him." And actually, uh, some of them were John the Baptist's disciples, and they lead John the Baptist and they follow Jesus. So that's how it all started. And slowly, they went and got other people, and <clears throat> and so the twelve disciples came in. So if you're following Jesus, you don't know him very well, but there's a revelation in your heart. This, I, I think he's the Messiah. I think he's the Messiah. But that conviction is growing over time because you're, you're, you're with him. So I think, you know, if you just use our imagination, there would be at least three important things that contribute to us strengthening our faith in the person of Christ, physically I'm talking about. One was, you know, be keep seeing or we're seeing what he's doing right so you can imagine the first time they see jesus doing a miracle wow this is a miracle and then they see him do it again and again and again and soon they're like miracles are happening you know uh, 
and then they keep hearing his teachings they keep understanding like oh so this is how we can also walk in faith right because that's was one of the things jesus was doing was he's teaching them how to walk in faith right that's why he was teaching all these things so they're also learning okay so this is what we must do we must speak oh we must pray and we must do this so they are seeing him they are hearing him and most importantly are spending time with him so the relationship is built right and there's a revelation from the father that this is the son of god the son of the living god so i think that relationship with jesus hearing his words and then seeing him do these things contribute to them coming to this place of faith now today jesus is not there in the physical so we don't have the same as those 12 disciples but I think the, the, the same, the essence of these principles apply for, to us. What is it? We have to spend time with Jesus. It's relationship with Jesus. Uh, and in that place of relationship is where we receive revelation that this is the Son of God, that God is so great, God is so powerful. My God can do anything, right? So relationship births revelation. Second, it's the word of God. Faith comes through hearing the word, right? Just, just, you just choose to stay focused on the word. Thy word is truth, right? And you don't get disturbed by uh, the external factors, the winds and the waves, but you keep your eyes on the word. This is what God said, right? So the word of God. Uh, time with uh, relationship with Jesus, the word. And then the third is, the journey that you and I make, the experience, uh, like uh, I was sharing earlier, the more we begin to see him do miracles, it really strengthens us. We come to the place where I believe God will come through because, you know, we have a history with God, so, you know, so to speak. That means you've walked all these days and months and years with God and you've seen his faithfulness. So now you just know that God will do it. You have a history with God. So these are things that really help us. And we will talk about, you know, developing strong faith. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. Okay. So let's do this, please. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And uh, 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 um, yeah. All right, I'm just reading. So can we, yeah, I was walking on. I was telling you, it was about a fog. Um, okay. Yeah, so, you know, what we say is faith is like your sixth sense, right? Remember, we are natural. So I'm just responding to Sitkenu's uh, comment about, uh, you know, uh, the logic, the brain, and faith. Right, so in the natural, we operate with the five senses, right? Which are of course processed through our brain, the five senses. Faith is your sixth sense, right? Faith is a spiritual faculty. So just as our body has natural faculties, which you know are basically summed up in these five physical senses, your human spirit has faculties or things it can do. And in your second year, you will have a course on developing the human spirit, how to develop the human spirit. Just as we develop the physical body, you know, we go to, we have learning, we want to, we develop the physical body, we need to develop the human spirit. But we find in scripture that the human spirit has faculties, meaning things it can do. One of the things the human spirit can do is to have faith in God. Remember we said in the very beginning, faith is of the heart. For with the heart, man believes. So faith is a faculty of the spirit, the human spirit. With the heart, man believes. Just like the five senses are the faculties of the natural man, which are then processed by the brain. So that the, the challenge here is, while we are living in the natural world and we engage with our five natural senses, we are also spiritual beings, so which we therefore we can engage with our spiritual sense of faith. So that's the invitation God has given to us. You walk by faith, 
not by your five physical senses. Meaning, don't limit yourself to your five physical senses. Of course, we need our five physical senses for our day-to-day -day life. You know, you're crossing the street. Uh, of course, you have to see and hear and then cross the street. But you use your sixth sense of faith uh, when you're dealing with the situations of life, you're dealing with things of life. That means uh, your, your sixth sense of faith overrides what your five senses are telling you. And we'll look at this in depth when we look at the faith of Abraham that, that's coming up in chapter 7. When we study the faith of Abraham, this is one thing that comes out very clearly, right? So, uh, and this was the way. Everybody walked in faith. So right from the time of the people in the Old Testament, they all had their five senses, but they chose to walk in their sixth sense. The same thing today. We all have our five senses, but we choose to walk with our sixth sense of faith, right? And faith sees what the natural eye doesn't see. That, that is faith, okay? So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, and let, uh, let's just quickly read it, two verses each. And I just want you to see how people in the Old Testament had faith. And as we go along, I will just highlight a few things, okay? So I might interrupt, you know, after every two verses, I'll just make a comment. So somebody could start up. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Somebody please just read, read it out for us. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Now faith is the substance of things of for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders of them a good testimony. Mm, thank you. So verse 1 is the def definition of faith, right? Which we spent a lot of time on the very beginning. But this is what faith is, right? It's a substance or what you're hoping for. It's the evidence of things not seen. That means my five physical senses say it's not there, but my faith says it is there because faith is the conviction. It's the evidence of unseen realities. But notice verse two, it says, by it, by faith, the elders. So he's talking about the elders, meaning he's referring to all the Old Testament heroes. They, the people in the Old Testament, obtained a good report or a good testimony, right? So this is very interesting, right? Uh, this is a very interesting thing. When we use the word testimony, generally we use it in the context of what people see and say about us. And that's testimony, meaning uh, what is your testimony? What, what are people seeing and saying about you? Hebrews 11.2 is using the word testimony from a different perspective. What does God see and say about you? This is God's testimony about you. What is God seeing and saying about you? And if you want to get a good report from God, that means you want to have a good testimony from God, he says, you've got to have faith. But he says in verse 2, for by it, that is by faith, these elders, these people, he's going to mention many of their names. They received a good testimony from God. God gave them a good report. God saw and said good things about them. So you see how important faith is. Faith gives us a good testimony before God. And that is more important than what people say. Now, of course, it's, it's, it's important that we have a good testimony before people, but first focus on having a good testimony before God. And when you have a good testimony before God, those who love God will be able to see your testimony. Okay. Let's read verses three and four, please. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made of what was visible. Four. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. When God spoke well of his offering, and by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. Mm, thank you. Now, look at verse 3. Now, in your second year, we have a course on Christian apologetics, where we talk about God and creation and how we know God exists and 
how you know God created all these things and and we talk about God and science and then there is this big question and, and you will learn all this in detail when you come to your second year in this course on Christian apologetics but you know there is this whole thing between creation and what what scientists now there are many Christians, there are, some, there are many scientists who are Christians, who are believers. But then there are scientists who are atheists. And it's very interesting how what atheists say, right? So basically, uh, on, the, on the big question of origin of life, atheists today, the current explanation is that the universe began with the Big Bang. So they have a, a they have a theory, the Big Bang theory. Basically, the, you know, you go back in time to the time before the beginning, and they say, and there's no explanation, but they say the time before the beginning, uh, which is which in scientific terms was called a singularity. At that moment in singularity, there was mass and energy compressed together. Hum an uh, unquantifiable amount of mass and energy. And in, in, in that single, singularity, in the moment of singularity, this whole thing exploded. And in one, you know, one to the 10 to the power of minus 30, that means one with 10, you know, 30, zero, one over 30 zeros. In that, that, that minute, moment of a second energy so much energy was released so intense heat was released that you know this vast expanse of universe came into existence okay so that's what their explanation is now they don't know how mass and energy and all of that came and space came into existence they're just making the assumption so there's this interesting debate between atheists and Christians. Atheists say, these people are just having faith. And we say, well, you're also having faith. Because it takes a lot of faith to believe that all of this just came, in, came into existence the way they say it came into existence. Here, Hebrews 11.3 says, we have faith. But our faith is in God the creator. By faith, we understand. So faith gives us this understanding that the universe, today the universe continues to expand, that the universe came into existence by the word of God. So we are saying when God spoke the word, all the energy, all the power and everything and the design for everything was in those words. So the word of God carried within it the power, everything that to bring into being and the design. Because when you look at the universe, it is so amazing. There are over 40 parameters that, that describe, you know, the physical constants that describe this universe, which are so precise. Even if one of those constants were to change, the whole universe would collapse. So scientists tell us that these constants are there, but they can never tell how they came into existence. Why is gravity there? And why is it so precise? They can tell you gravity is there, but they cannot tell you why it is there. And they cannot tell you how it came into existence. Then they can say it is there. So, so you know, we will, we will look at all these things uh, in the second year course. But it's so amazing. Yes, we have faith. But scientists also have faith. They believe in this theory that cannot be proved. We have faith. But our faith is very logical that there is God who is so powerful, who stretched out the heavens, and he caused all these things to be come into existence. And it was God who gave the design for everything. And when you, when you look at molecular, the molecular level, molecular biology, it's so amazing. And you look at the DNA. You know, it, it baffles human understanding that there can be so much design. But we say, by faith, we understand that the heavens were framed by the word of God.
the God spoke the word, it all came to existence, right? So, uh, atheists say Christians are deluded. That means they believe something that they that that's unreasonable. But similarly, the same thing applies to them. They're also believing something very unreasonable because there's no explanation there. It's just a theory, right? So I'm going back to verse three. Verse three is telling us, look, faith helps us understand the origin of the universe. Faith helps us understand the beginning of life. How did it start? God spoke things into existence. And we also understand something more. We understand that there are two realms. There's the seen and the unseen. There is the natural and there is the uh, spiritual. There is the visible and there is the invisible. And we understand by faith that the natural came out of the spiritual. The visible came out of the invisible. Uh, the physical came out of the uh, uh, the, the spiritual. So we understand that. So for us, it's very clear. By faith, we understand. It makes things clear for us. Okay. Then he talks about in verse 4, about Abel. He says, you know, Abel, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. Now, why was Abel's sacrifice more excellent than Cain? So when you go back to Genesis 4 and you look at uh, Cain and Abel coming to bring the sacrifice to God, you find that Cain brought something that he had worked on. He brought the fruit of the, he was a farmer. He brought the fruit of the ground. But Abel brought an animal sacrifice, something he didn't create, right? so this a blood sacrifice and God accepted Right, And what God sees is that, so, so we understand this, and, and, and God is seeing Abel doing it by faith. Now, Cain was very upset, but God said, Cain, you can also do what Abel did, meaning bring an animal sacrifice. So it seems to us that there must have been an understanding given to them that when you come to worship God, you come on the basis of blood, you don't come on the basis of your works, but to bring this kind of a sacrifice. God must have given that understanding. But Abel decided to come the way God wanted him to come. Cain said, I will come my way. And so Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Cain's was rejected. But why did Abel do that? Why did Abel come that way? Because the Bible says here, he did it by faith. Right? So he came to God on the basis of what God had taught him. And that took faith. I come to worship you that way. And he says, though he's dead, look, look at verse four. And though he is dead, he still speaks. So a life of faith leaves a legacy of faith. And that's what happened to Abel. His life of faith left a legacy of faith. So that he says, although he's dead, till even today, his life is speaking. He's telling us that we worship God on the basis of faith in God, right? Verse five and six, please. I'll try to go a little faster. Oops, it's already 9.50. Um, okay. Um, you all with me so far? Yes, yes, yes Pastor. All right, okay, all right. Uh, time went off so fast. Um, all right, we have to take a break. Let's take a quick 10 minute break and come back and we'll try to finish Hebrews 11 and uh, we will go forward from there. Okay, let's take a quick break, please. Thank you. <laughs> 